Hello students, today we will learn about antigen presenting cells, macrophages, then rhytic cells. Now first we will have a brief introduction. The formation of peptide MSC complexes requires that a protein antigen be degraded into peptides by a sequence of events called antigen processing. The degraded peptides then associate with MSC molecules within the cell interior and the peptide MSC complexes are transported to the membrane where they are displayed. Cells that display peptides associated with class 1 MSC molecules to CD8 positive TC cells are referred to as target cells. Cells that display peptides associated with class 2 MSC molecules to CD4 positive TH cells are called antigen presenting cells. Types of APCs Professional antigen presenting cells, this includes dendritic cells, macrophages, and B lymphocytes. Non professional antigen presenting cells include fibroblasts, skin, thymic epithelial cells, glial cells from brain, thyroid epithelial cells, pancreatic beta cells vascular endothelial cells. Now let us see how antigen is recognized by T cells. The T cell receptor recognizes only antigen that is bound to a particular classes of self molecules encoded by genes within the major histocompatibility complex on the surface of antigen presenting cells. T cells expressing CD8, a dimeric membrane glycoprotein are restricted to recognition of antigen bound to class 1 MSC molecules. CD4 positive T cells generally function as T helper cells and are class 2 restricted CD8 positive T cells generally function as T cytotoxic TC cells and are class 1 restricted. T8 cells are activated by recognition of an antigen class 2 MSC complex on an antigen presenting cell. After activation, the T8 cell begins to divide and gives rise to a clone of effector cells, each specific for the same antigen class 2 MSC complex. Antigen presentation with class 1 and class 2 MSC molecules. Dendritic cells macrophages and B lymphocytes differ from each other in their mechanisms of antigen uptake in whether they constitutively express class 2 MSC molecules and in their co-stimulatory activity. Dendritic cells are the most effective of the antigen presenting cells because these cells constitutively express a high level of class 2 MSC molecules and co-stimulatory activity. They can activate naive TH cells. Macrophages must be activated by phagocytosis or particulate antigens before they express class 2 MSC molecules or the co-stimulatory B7 membrane molecule. B cells constitutively express class 2 MSC molecules but must be activated before they express the co-stimulatory B7 molecule. The non-professional antigen presenting cells can be induced to express class 2 MSC molecules or a co-stimulatory signal. Many of these cells function in antigen presentation only for short periods of time during a sustained inflammatory response. Now let us see the processing and presentation pathways. The immune system uses two different pathways to eliminate intracellular and extracellular antigens. The first one is the endogenous antigens, the cytosolic pathway. Peptides for presentation are generated by protease complexes called proteasomes. Intracellular proteins are degraded into short peptides by a cytosolic proteolytic system present in all cells. Those proteins targeted for proteolysis often have a small protein called ubiquitin attached to them. Ubiquitin protein conjugates can be degraded by a multifunctional protease complex called a proteasome. Experimental evidence indicates that the immune system utilizes this general pathway of protein degradation to produce small peptides for presentation with class 1 MSC molecules. 
The proteasomes involved in antigen processing include two subunits encoded within the MSC gene cluster, LMP2 and LMP7, and a third non-MSC protein, LMP10, also called MECL1. All three are induced by increased levels of TC cell cytokine interferon gamma. The peptidase activities of proteasomes containing LMP2, LMP7, and LMP10 preferentially generate peptides that bind to MSC class 1 molecules. Such proteasomes, for example, show increased hydrolysis of peptide bonds that follow basic N or hydrophobic residues. Peptides are transported from cytosol to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The transporter protein tab for transporter associated with antigen processing is a membrane-spanning heterodimer consisting of two proteins, TAP1 and TAP2. In addition to their multiple transmembrane segments, the TAP1 and TAP2 proteins each have a domain projecting into the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and an ATP binding domain that projects into the cytosol. Both TAP1 and TAP2 belong to the family of ATP binding cassette proteins found in the membranes of many cells, including bacteria. These proteins mediate ATP dependent transport of amino acids, sugars, ions, and peptides. Peptides generated in the cytosol by the proteasome are translocated by TAP into the rough endoplasmic reticulum by a process that requires the hydrolysis of ATP. TAP has the highest affinity for peptides containing 8 to 10 amino acids, which is the optimal peptide length for class 1 MSC binding. In addition, TAP appears to favor peptides with hydrophobic or basic carboxy terminal amino acids, the preferred anchored residues for class 1 MSC molecules. Thus, TAP is optimized to transport peptides that will interact with class 1 MSC molecules. Peptides assemble with class 1 MSC aided by chaperone molecules. The alpha chain and beta 2 microglobulin components of the class 1 MSC molecule are synthesized on polysomes along the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Assembly of these components into a stable class 1 MSC molecular complex that can exit. The RER requires the presence of a peptide in the binding group of the class 1 molecule. Kelnexin, a resident membrane protein of the endoplasmic reticulum, associates with the free class 1 alpha chain and promotes its folding. When beta 2 microglobulin binds to the alpha chain, Kelnexin is released and the class 1 molecule associates with the chaperone Cal reticulin and with tapacin. Tapacin, TAP associated protein, brings the TAP transporter into proximity with the class 1 molecule and allows it to acquire an antigenic peptide. The physical association of the alpha chain and the beta microglobulin heterodimer with the TAP protein promotes peptide capture by the class 1 molecule before the peptides are exposed to the luminal environment of the RER. Peptides not bound by class 1 molecules are rapidly degraded. As a consequence of peptide binding, the class 1 molecule displays an increased stability and can dissociate from calreticulin and tapacin, exit from the RER and proceed to the cell surface via the Golgi. An additional chaperone protein ERP57 contributes to the formation of disulfide bonds during the maturation of class 1 chains. And the second pathway, exogenous antigens, the endocytic pathway. Macrophages internalize antigen by both processes whereas most other APCs are not phagocytic or are poorly phagocytic and therefore internalize exogenous antigen only by endocytosis, either receptor mediate endocytosis or pinocytosis. B cells, for example, internalize antigen very effectively by receptor mediated endocytosis using antigen specific membrane antibody as the receptor. Peptides are generated from internalized molecules in endocytic vesicles. 
Once an antigen is internalized, it is degraded into peptides within compartments of the endocytic processing pathway. The endocytic pathway appears to involve three increasingly acidic components, early endosomes, pH 6.0 to 6.5, Lead endosomes or endolysosomes pH 5.0 to 6.0 and lysosomes pH 4.5 to 5.0. Internalized antigen moves from early to lead endosomes and finally to lysosomes, encountering hydrolytic enzymes and a lower pH in each compartment. Within the compartments of the endocytic pathway, antigen is degraded into oligopeptides of about 13 to 18 residues which bind to class 2 MSC molecules. Early endosomes from the periphery move inward to become lead endosomes and finally lysosomes. Alternatively, small transfer vesicles may carry antigens from one compartment to the next. Eventually, the endocytic compartments or portions of them return to the cell periphery where they fuse with the plasma membrane. In this way, the surface receptors are recycled. The invariant chain guides transport of class II MSC molecules to endocytic vesicles. When class II MSC molecules are synthesized with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, three pairs of class II alpha-beta chains associate with a pre-assembled trimer of a protein called invariant chain LICD74. This trimeric protein interacts with the peptide binding cleft of the class II molecules, preventing any endogenously derived peptides from binding to the cleft while the class II molecule is within the RER. The invariant chain also appears to be involved in the folding of the class II alpha and beta chains. Their exit from the RER and the subsequent routing of class II molecules to the endocytic processing pathway from the trans-Golgi network. The invariant chain contains sorting signals in its cytoplasmic tail that directs the transport of the class II MSC complex from the trans-Golgi network to the endocytic compartments. Peptides assemble with class II MSC molecules by displacing clip. Most class II MSC invariant chain complexes are transported from the RER where they are formed through the Golgi complex and trans-Golgi network and then through the endocytic pathway, moving from early endosomes to late endosomes and finally to lysosomes. As the proteolytic activity increases in each successive compartment, the invariant chain is gradually degraded. However, a short fragment of the invariant chain termed clip for class II associated invariant chain peptide remains bound to the class II molecule after the invariant chain has been cleaved within the endosomal compartment. Cliff physically occupies the peptide binding groove of the class II MSC molecule, presumably preventing any premature binding of antigenic peptide. Non-classical class II MSC molecule called HLA-DM is required to catalyze the exchange of the clip with antigenic peptides. The reaction between HLA-DM and the class II clip complex facilitating exchange of the clip for another peptide is impaired in the presence of HLA-DO, which binds to the HLA-DM and lessens the efficiency of the exchange reaction. HLA-DO, like HLA-DM, is a non-classical and polymorphic class II molecule that is also found in the MHC of other species. Superimposing the structure of HLA-DR3 clip or another DR molecule bound to the antigenic peptide reveals that clip binds to class II in the same stable manner as the antigenic peptide. Once a peptide has bound, the peptide class II complex is transported to the plasma membrane where the neutral pH appears to enable the complex to assume a compact, stable form. Peptide is bound so strongly in this compact form that it is difficult to replace a class II bound peptide on the membrane with another peptide at physiologic conditions. Presentation of non-peptide antigens 
certain CD1 molecules are recognized by T cells in the absence of foreign antigens and self-restriction can be demonstrated in these reactions. CD1 molecules are able to process antigen in depth deficient cells. The CD1A and 1B molecules traffic differently with CD1A at the surface or in the recycling endocytic compartments and CD1B and CD1D in the lysosomal compartments. The T cell types reactive to CD1 were first thought to be limited to the T cells expressing the gamma, delta, TCR and lacking both CD4 and CD8 or T cells with a single TCR alpha chain but Recent reports indicate that a wider range of T-cell types will recognize CD1-presenting cells. Now, coming to the conclusion, we have learned that T-cells recognize antigen displayed within the cleft of a self-MSC molecule on the membrane of a cell. In general, CD4-TH cells recognize antigen with class II MSC molecules on antigen processing cells CD8 T cells recognize antigen with class 1 MSC molecules on target cells. Complexes within antigenic peptides and MSC complexes are formed by degradation of a protein antigen in one of the two different antigen processing pathways. Endogenous antigens are degraded into peptides within the cytosol by proteasomes and assemble with class 1 molecules in the RER. Exogenous antigens are internalized and degraded within the acidic endocytic compartments and subsequently pair with class II molecules. Peptide binding to class II molecules involves replacing a fragment of the invariant chain in the binding cleft by a process catalyzed by non-classic MSC molecules HLA-DM. Presentation of non-peptide lipid and glycolipid antigens derived from bacteria involves a class 1 like CD1 molecules. Thank you.